the tranquil landscape of Lamdong province, the French colonial territory of Cochin, China, 1938. Cochin, China is part of the French Empire in the East, a colony they call Andochine. Indochina is formed by Laos and Cambodia in the west and the eastern territories of Tonkin, Annam and Cochin, China, the ancient kingdom of Vietnam. Fiercely independent, after successfully resisting invasions from China for centuries, the native peoples have been living under French rule for over 50 years. Now, disguised by the timeless serenity of their countryside, these outwardly placid people are building powerful independence movements. Almost 40 years of desperate struggle and appalling suffering will follow. using their own first-hand accounts and previously unseen film shot entirely in colour. This is their story. West Frontier, the gateway to Asia, 1937. Peshawar, the last outpost of the British Empire in India. As part of their grand tour, adventurers and amateur cinematographers, Edward de Rothschild and Peter Traherne, are traveling through the vast and ancient lands of Asia. They record these unique images of more than 70 years ago on 16 millimeter film. They have never been broadcast before. Saigon, 11th of November, 1938 the 20th anniversary of Armistice Day. French colonial forces march to honor the dead of the Great War. It is only two decades since the end of a war that was supposed to end all wars, during which France suffered over four million casualties. Saigon journalist, Ngo Wien Lacroix, a bystander, 
The troops were very impressive in their fine uniforms. Their weapons and medals shone in the bright sunlight. There was lots of cheering, but most of the people there had a lot to gain from the French occupation. In the countryside, it was different. In less than a year, the world will once more be engulfed in global conflict. We were told that a war was coming in Europe. We hoped that would mean the French would leave us in peace. Saigon has all the trappings of the colonial good life. But the French authorities treat dissent ruthlessly. In Go Ving Long, raised in the Mekong Delta in the south of the country, remembers his childhood under French rule. The French made routine patrols and killed many Vietnamese. They dumped their bodies in the river. Every time I went down to get water, I saw floating corpses. I hated the French. My father said, we shouldn't hate the French, only French colonial policy. The remote villages in the mountains and jungles are fertile recruiting grounds for the nationalist cause. Long's father is active in the struggle. My father was very idealistic. He gave most of his land to the peasants in his village in the north and moved to the Mekong Delta as a school teacher. He was horribly tortured by the French. They bashed his head and broke his ribs, puncturing his lungs. Doctor said he only had a week to live, but he refused to die. Fort Puplek, a French fortification in the Kratai district of southeast Cambodia, 1938. It has been built to keep at bay the local people, a tribe the French call Le Moy Sauvage, the Wild Moy. The Western colonial powers espouse the virtues of liberal democracy. So many nationalist movements look to communism for ideological support, especially the Marxist-Leninism of the Soviet Union. The leader of the Indo-Chinese Communist Party is a 48-year-old Vietnamese exile. His name, Ho Chi Minh. Soviet documentary maker Roman Carmen films him and his supporters in 1954. In an address at the founding of the Indo-Chinese Communist Party, Ho Chi Minh. World War II will soon break out. When it happens, the French imperialists will certainly drive our people to a more horrible slaughter. However, the barbarous oppression and ruthless exploitation have awakened our compatriots. Everywhere, the masses have risen to oppose the French imperialists. <laughs> 